Have a listen to this bit of advice that he's got for Joe Biden and the Democrats, because I reckon this is absolutely spot on. President Biden, number one, stop weaponization. Fight your fight yourself. Don't use prosecutors and judges to go after your opponent to try and damage your opponent so you can win an election. Our country is much bigger than that. Kristen, surely you'd agree. I mean, to beat the guy, if you want to beat him, beat him at the ballot, ballot box. Beat him through politics and political debate, not through courts and judicial processes. Well, Biden can't do that. His record has been a complete disaster. At this point, you have six in 10 Americans who doubt his mental capabilities. His record, uh, his approval rating, rather, is at a near record low. Only 37% of Americans approve of his handling uh, of the nation as a whole. And then immigration is now the top issue for voters nationwide, and that's a complete disaster. I mean, we have got more illegal immigrants who have been arrested in this country under Joe Biden than the entire populations of 36 U.S. states. So this is a president who cannot run on his track record. That is simply not an option. So again, they are trying to create chaos and they are playing to their base of dedicated leftists at this point who don't even care about the track record. They just hate Donald Trump so much and the Democrats are hoping that they can mobilize that base to the extent that they can win just by getting them to the ballot box. And that's mostly just single, white, unmarried women, basically cat ladies. They're just going to try to get all the cat ladies in the country to the ballot box because they can't win on trying to sell this administration's track record to the general population. It's been a disaster. Not that we've got anything against cat ladies. <laughs> cat ladies <laughs> are entitled to vote as well. I want to stay on immigration a bit, but we're going to get there in a roundabout way because I want to show you and our viewers uh, what the Vice President, Kamala Harris, had to say this week on the Middle East crisis. She was in some ways uh, showed more certitude uh, and more, she was more robust and got out ahead, really, of the president of this issue. Have a look. Given the immense scale of suffering in Gaza, there must be an immediate ceasefire. This will get the hostages out and get a significant amount of aid in. Yeah, well, typical of her, she's oversimplifying a very, very difficult situation, very strong there. But my point is, Kristen, that her job is supposed to be, isn't it, to fix the border situation. That's the, the one big task that the president got her, <laughs> gave her, and she's done nothing. Yeah, she's supposed to be the border czar. Look at what a great job she's done. The most conservative estimates I've seen have said that 7.2 million illegals have been apprehended under the Biden administration. The number's far higher than that, probably around 10 million. And uh, these are immigrants. We don't know who they are. Just the sheer number of people that are coming into this country and flooding uh, institutions and public spaces that are supposed to be for law-abiding American citizens. It is just infuriating. And it's gotten to the point, Chris, where, where Democrats, very, very, uh, you know, loyal Democrats, who I know many of, are very worried about this issue now in a way that I've never heard them worry about it before. This is closer to home because these migrants are being bused to co coastal cities and going into to, uh, neighborhoods that previously had been sort of protected from this issue. So I'm hearing a lot of people talk about this issue in a way that, uh, that shows a rising level of concern. And this will be the toughest topic and issue for the Biden administration to defend going into this election because it's just been such an utter failure for them. Yeah, it might be a good idea for Kamala Harris uh, to get her nose out of Middle East politics, to so leave that to the experts and uh, see if she can't actually do her day job, which is trying to restore the security of that southern border. Great to talk to you again, Kristen. We'll catch up next week. Thank you, as always, Chris.